thank you very much indeed. And, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the privilege of um, being invited and having me here uh, on your beautiful Navajo Nation. It's always a, a privilege to come here, so I, I thank you very much. Um, I am again, uh, this is something that's never happened to me before, actually, in that I look at the title of the talk that I'm giving on the, uh, on the screen, and I see that I'm giving a different talk in the program, but um, I can certainly take questions, and I'm happy to discuss gastric cancer um, as well. So if I could just move right now to the next slide. And I put this up here, not to go through the numbers in any great detail, but just to show you that as far as the, the general U.S. is concerned, and I realize that these numbers don't apply uh, to the Navajo Nation, but these are the four major killing cancers. And one of the things that we're learning is that, in fact, um, there is a very much a, an approaching of the two curves, as it were, so that, that as the years go by, the, the cancers that are killing people um, here in the Navajo Nation uh, are probably almost certainly going to be aligning them more and more uh, towards the rates that we see for the rest of the country. And I put this slide up here to look, show you the numbers of deaths for the whole country. Uh, but also to start out by making uh, a very, very important point, and that is that a large number, a large proportion of the deaths that you see listed here and the estimated new cases, a large number, particularly of the deaths, uh, could be prevented, are preventable. And so my message for the next 20 minutes or so is that let's do a far better job of being aware of the common cancers that are out there and being aware of all the measures that we can take not to make our lives boring or tedious or anything like that, but to make sure that we minimize the number of us who are going to be dying from these cancers prematurely. So next slide. Next slide. So I'm, I'm actually just going to focus on, on colorectal cancer. That's cancers of the large bowel, the colon, and the rectum. But many of the messages about being aware of these things early and getting in line with recommendations for getting screened, for getting checked out for these cancers, these messages apply for not just the cancers, actually, it applies to diabetes, it applies to heart disease. So the more that we can understand that there are things that we can do to take control of our lives and to reduce our likelihood from, from getting major illnesses or to be postponing the time that we do get those, major illnesses and then minimizing our, our, our likelihood of being disabled by these, um, these major illnesses. The more we can get out the message that we have the power to take into our own hands, our own destiny, so to speak, to quite a considerable degree, the better. And the colon, I don't have a point of view, but this is what, I've probably done about 10,000 colonoscopies in my time and that's more than most people would want to do. Uh, but so when you look up from the south pole, so to speak, into the colon through a thing called a colonoscope, and what you see on the left there is when you, what you see in a normal colon, and then in the middle panel, there's a little lump, what we call a polyp, uh, that is on, growing on, on the wall of the colon there, and then on the right is what we don't want to postpone until we see it. Uh, we'd like to be doing something about that cancer way before it gets to that stage. And we're lucky in the colon and rectum, actually, in that nearly all of the cancers that you see, like you see in the right panel there start out life as one of those little dinsels, the little, little polyp there uh, on the wall of the colon. Uh, and so if we can remove that polyp at that stage, you're never going to get the cancer in the right panel. Now, that's good news and bad. It's nearly all good news. But the only bad news about it is that nobody ever has any symptoms because of something like you see in the middle panel there. So the only way you're ever going to find out about that is by getting what we call screen. So that means when you're completely healthy, you don't think anything's wrong with you whatsoever, you have a test done to see if you have something like that in the middle panel. The next slide. And again, I don't want to bore you with a whole, it's uh, speaking after a large, excellent meal is always a bit of a penalty for the speaker because you can see the sort of hooded eye look coming down over the audience. So I don't want to bamboozle you with a lot of numbers. But essentially what uh, I'm showing here in, <coughs> uh, in, in the white um, and in the green are, are different uh, rates for getting colorectal cancer in, by different regions of the country. And you can see that um, in, 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 what, in a major, in an important respect, 
that actually the, the non-Hispanic whites, as people like me, are actually ahead of American Indians and Alaska Natives. Uh, with some exceptions like Alaska, for instance, they have a very big problem with colorectal cancer in Alaska. But again, what I would like to emphasize is that uh, the green and the white are, are probably more and more aligning themselves. And so what this is meaning is that everybody, all of us in this wonderful large country of so many different pe peoples from so many backgrounds, all of us have to be worried about colorectal cancer. But again, I'm just using colorectal cancer as an example. The same goes for breast cancer, uh, prostate cancer. There's an increasing um, problem here uh, among Native Americans in the, in the Navajo Nation. So all, we're in this together. Uh, I should also say that, of course, the, uh, the, the, the more people die every, every year in this country from lung cancer than from any other cancer. It's not the kind of league table that you want to be the top of, but the top certainly is lung cancer, and I'm afraid colorectal cancer is number two. And so that, that's kind of the league table. And I always feel that any talk that I'm giving about preventive health, one has to mention lung cancer, because that brings up the concept of, the, of tobacco. And uh, I'm not sure whether Pete is here, but I was a very interesting person who works at Winslow, who I was talking to yesterday, was telling me that 36% 30, of the high school students uh, in Winslow uh, are, are using tobacco or smoking. And that's terrible. I mean, that is absolutely terrible. There is a, uh, those of us who are, you know, not me, but those who are younger in the audience are, are going to watch a terrible story over the course of your lives in China. There is an absolutely incredible tobacco epidemic and uh, lung cancer epidemic that is going to unfold uh, in China. So we've exported tobacco essentially to China, uh, and we're now giving, uh, as with our blessing, so to speak, lung cancer. The tobacco companies in the world, places like England, where I come from, in America, that have these tobacco companies, are pushing this tobacco out all over the world, and there is going to be a huge epidemic. So I, I'll stop pumping my thumb now, but remember that when, with most of the common cancers, there is an awful lot that we can do to prevent ourselves from, from getting these cancers and to make sure that we get diagnosed as early as possible. Next slide. Uh, next. Yes. So the, the, I'm uh, grateful to Chuck Wiggins. I think Tim, you said he might be here. I don't see, I don't know. Whether. So Chuck uh, Wiggins um, runs the, the Cancer Registry in New Mexico. And again, this is a very complicated slide, but the bottom line of this is, if you look at that gray line, it's more or less straight and heading upwards. Uh, that's, uh, this is, these are Chuck Wiggins' data, going back to 1973 up to 2004. And that upward trajectory, that, that d denotes the increasing uh, incidence among Native Americans through going through the New, New Mexico tumor registry. Uh, the blue line at the top, you can see, is dipping down. So the incidence is coming down some in non-Hispanic whites. Uh, and you can see that for Hispanics, the line is, is heading upwards. So that's, those are data from very, very near here. And it's not that I'm saying anybody's better or worse than anybody else, but what I'm emphasizing again is that for the common cancers, we're all in this together. Next, please. And these um, are data um, from Tim Flood, who is sitting here in, in the third row in, in the middle. And this is a very important slide too. Uh, and Tim is absolutely right to uh, bring this to our, our attention. So uh, a, a, an abiding principle with the most common can most cancers is that the earlier you can diagnose them in their natural history, that's the technical term that you use, the better, because the earlier you diagnose them, the less far they will have spread. And that's particularly the case for colorectal cancer. And so what uh, this, this slide here is showing um, <clears throat> is the, the different proportions according to racial background of uh, what we call regional colorectal cancer. And the point about this is that the proportion of cases that are being diagnosed at an earlier stage is much lower among American Indians and, and, and Af 